Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. We're here with Sarah Lucina from Kagiyan and the winner of Survivor Game Changers. Hi, Sarah. Congratulations on your win. Hey, thank you. Did you consider not playing Survivor again, or was that an easy yes for you? No, it was actually kind of difficult when I had to sit down and, and talk to my husband about it because we have a little boy at home, and how are we going to do this logistically if I meet for this amount of time and whatnot. So um, I basically, you know, I had to figure all that out. And then once I felt comfortable that everything would be okay, then I, I you know, I gave them the green light. Like, yeah, absolutely, I'll come back and play. So how did your family react to that when you told them you are going to play again? They were super supportive. You know, they wanted me to go play again. I think they could tell that I had unfinished business. And, you know, they're like, you need to go back out there. But for me as a mom, I didn't want to leave my son for that long of time. But, but you know, obviously now I'm... I'm glad that I went, and because everything has worked out just fine. And how long did you have to prepare this time, and what, if anything, did you do different to prepare? Well, so I probably knew. I got the call probably two months in advance, and I didn't get the, like, total, okay, yes, you're coming on until probably two or three weeks. But once you get the call and you start prepping, I really was prepping every day. Most of my conversations were about, okay, if this would happen, what would we? What would I do? If that, if this, um, making sure I'm paying attention for idols, hidden at challenges and things like that. And just, just kind of getting my mind ready to be in that mode. And then obviously, you know, watching some seasons back and whatnot, just to, to, to really prepare. Cause I didn't want to go out there and not come home with the money. To me, that wouldn't have been worth it. And were you having those prep calls with Tony? That you is that what you were talking about in the reunion show? Yeah. So like Tony, I mean, the guy is just he's at a ten all the time. Like he doesn't back down. So he would literally call me, and it's six thirty his time, but five thirty my time, nearly every morning. And I'm like, Tony, come on, man. I'll talk to you. Let's talk at like 7:30. Like I gotta get ready for work and stuff. Like you're waking me up, but it's it's because you know the anxiety of going out and playing. And he wants his his wife has probably said, Tony, I'm done talking to you about this stuff. <laughs> and so that's probably why he's calling me is because he's like, Yo, my wife won't listen to me. I gotta talk to you about it. <laughs> and uh, but it, it was funny. And and. In all reality, it probably helped me because he was a great winner. And to see him play and then hear how his brain worked for two months before going out there, I think definitely benefited me. What did you think of the new final tribal council format? I personally like the new format. The old format, if someone doesn't like you, they can get up and make a nasty statement about you. And you don't necessarily have the chance to uh, rebuttal if they don't ask you a question. Or they can ask somebody a question to make them shine more. You know, this way, it's more of a roundtable. So, for example, like, Debbie clearly didn't like me. This shuts Debbie down from being able to isolate me when she gets her chance to talk. What was your reaction when you first saw who the other returning players were? Well, I thought it was like, I mean, you have these huge names, Sandra. You have told, you know, having three winners out there, I'm going what the heck is going on? Like, this is weird. I'm not in this category. Like, why am I here? Are they doing, like, a mentoring season? Like, what's going on here? And then when they tell us game changers, I'm like, do I deserve to be here in the eyes of viewers? And I'm like, no. But I know the game that I was playing in Kagiyan, and I know that I deserve to be out there. And I really took that opportunity to prove it to everyone that I was this, this good in Kagiyan also. I just didn't get the chance to make it far enough to show everybody that I can play this well. Was there anyone that you specifically did or didn't want to play with? No, no, because I went in saying, you you cannot enter the game and not want to play with people. You have to be open to everything. Even if you don't like the person, you have to be willing to work with them, because if you're not, then you're just limiting yourself. And typically that's not going to lead to success. So I was absolutely, you know, and in my last season I said, I will not vote out Trish. Well, that got me voted out by making that statement. So regardless of what it was, I had to be willing to write down my best friend's name as the time called. So what was the most difficult question you were asked at the final tribal? When Andrea was speaking to me about she she felt gross about the way 
she feels that I played and whatnot. It was like, I understand why you're seeing it that way. I view it differently. You view it as everything that came out of my mouth was a lie. It's really hard to get people to understand that the things I said were 100% genuine and real. But if if, I, if I'm talking to you on the phone right now and then I turn around and talk to somebody else um, 10 minutes later and they say something else that's more appealing I may, or better for my game, I may go that route. It doesn't mean that what I just said to you was not true. And that's Tony's style of play. He he told me that, and it really clicked then. Oh, uh aha, you can be genuine with these people. You can say these things to them. If it just doesn't work out that way, it's not your fault. And that's how I view it now. But a lot of people don't view it that way. Were there any answers that you gave that you wish had been shown but we didn't get to see? No, I don't think so. It was, you know, it was pretty hectic. So, and trying to hear with everything going on, I think, I think everything that was pertinent was, was shown. What do you think you said that persuaded them to, for the majority to give you the money? I don't know if there was a specific thing that I said, but I think what helped was that I just owned my game and I didn't go in there making excuses for why I did this or that. I said, this is what I did and because this is why I did it. And I understand that a lot of you are hurt, but I had to do it and look where I'm sitting. And you can't deny the fact that I played a great game. And I just hope that it's rewarded, you know, and and it was. Is there anyone who is still holding on to something you did to them in the game? No, you know what? Surprisingly, no. Like, even Debbie came up and was uh, congratulating me. She gives me a hug. She says, you know, game is game. Like, don't even worry about it. You know, so literally... I, I'm fine with everybody, or, or so I think, and it, it just sometimes takes some time to to get there. Trust me, I was there at Pagan, but I didn't care for Tony very much, and and we're like best buds now. So Sierra still seemed to be a little bit upset about the legacy advantage when we interviewed her. Has she let go of it now? I think so. I think Sierra. It's hard when you get. When someone tricks you so bad, you know, it's really hard to say okay, you got me. I just think it's natural to react that way. But yeah, definitely, like, we're, we're fine now. And if you hadn't played that advantage, did did you know that there were three votes against you and that you would have gone home if you hadn't played it? No, it, like, not playing it really wasn't an option. Mm-hmm. You'd be foolish to not play it. I, I can't play it any other time. Right. So why, why wouldn't I? But with that being said... I didn't know they were voting against me because that day I didn't really care because I knew I was safe. So I didn't do snooping around to figure out where things were going. But that also goes to show where maybe having safety isn't a good thing because you let your guard down. And then you don't realize what's happening in front of your eyes before, and then it's too late. What effect did Wyatt's visit have on your game? I told him, I said, I'm in a really good spot right now. And, you know, he he put me in check. And he's like, yeah, you thought that the last time, too. So get that out of your head. You know, you, you need to continue to be playing smart and a good game so it was you know he really just kind of put me in check because I was getting starting to get a little cocky and I was starting to be like yes I have this game by the throat and he's like no you know you can say that when you're done you can't say that right now so I probably needed that reality check at that time tell us what it was like for you to go streaking with Aubrey on reward do that <laughs> <laughs> little birdie told us about it oh it was so funny i mean that's the thing the game has turned into such a strategic game that you know that's that's a lot it's there's so much strategy going on that that's all they have time to show because there's so much of it but we really had a great time out there and we're on reward and everybody's sitting on the deck and we have this infinity pool and aubrey and i go streaking and jump in the pool and and yeah it was funny and brad and and zeke and andrea are just dying laughing and but that's how we were like everybody was like that we were just fun but when it came time to get down to business then we turned the fun switch off when we got down to business speaking of getting down to business what were your reasons for disliking andrea so much and wanting her out of the game as soon as possible well Okay, so I didn't dislike Andrea. The way I would describe Andrea and I is like we're like 
sisters. Sometimes you love your sister, sometimes you hate your sister, but at the end of the day, no matter what, she's still your family and you're going to love them. And Andrew and I, we played every single day together. We were never split up. So there were times that, you know, and she self-admitted that she was like a diva this time and so emotional. So sometimes... You know, just having been around that all day and every day would be like, oh my gosh, like I've had enough. But it doesn't mean I I disliked Andrea. I just, I was annoyed, you know. Mm -hmm. And then once the whole Zeke thing kind of went down, she really wanted to go after Zeke. Then I wanted her out. And, And also I saw her as a huge threat. Like she is extremely good at challenges. I don't even come close to winning a challenge. And like Andrea is a beast at challenges. So... When she lost, we knew she had to go. Did you have any injuries or health issues while you were out there? No, this time I was good. Last time I cut my finger pretty good, but this time I I was okay. We we actually had kind of a scare one day. We had cooked a chi- like the last chicken and people were on a reward, so not everybody ate it. But every but like myself and Ty and someone else, we we started to get sick. And we were getting really sick pretty quickly. I think me, Ty, and Troy Van, maybe. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, because we just killed a chicken and we don't have soap to wash our hands or anything like that. Did we just get, like, E. coli or something like this? Because all three of us were, were sick within a couple hours. So, but luckily that, that passed on all of us. So I don't know what it was, but that was probably the worst thing that happened. Was there anything you wish had been shown about you that didn't make it on air? No, I think they did a pretty good job. I mean, early on, there's a lot of stuff that happens that doesn't get shown, but um, they kind of make up for it in the in the last part of the season where they show the strategic side. You know, Troy Zane and I were a lot closer than they had shown. We got really close at Tagua, and then I was always kind of feeding him intel and my thoughts um, after the merge all the time. We are always in communication with each other. Yeah, there was a secret scene where you uh, broke down when you were talking to him, when you realized that it, it was going to come down to Troy Zan's choice, potentially, of Taiwan immunity, that you yeah. seemed pretty broken up. Were you just working him, or was that based on I don't on know. That? I haven't seen it, so I don't... I, I, I haven't seen it, so okay. I don't necessarily remember that. It, you were telling him that Brad didn't need the money and there was no way you were going to be able to have another kid uh, if you didn't win. Yeah, I, um, I'll have to check that out. Okay. I Honestly, I don't. I mean, it's it's almost a year ago and without getting to watch it. Sure. Right. No problem. Know. Who did you help the most <laughs> in the game? Well, you know, I, I feel like I helped Michaela a lot. You know, at the merge, she wasn't really in with anybody. And Serena and I started to befriend Michaela. And Michaela had a lot of questions about how the game is played after the merge and whatnot. So I feel like I did some mentoring with Michaela on that level. You know, she was going to stay loyal. And, you know, Seri just... The stunt that got pulled, that kind of sealed Michaela's fate because I knew she was loyal to Sari also. So I figured we need to take out Sari's right-hand man instead of Sari at this point. And who would you say helped you the most? I would say Zeke probably helped me the most. He basically gave me permission to vote him out, um, and and then he would, you know, help advocate for me because he saw how great of a game I was playing. What's next for you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm on two hours of sleep, so I'm still <laughs> trying to process everything. Uh, so right now, I have no idea what's next. Well, Sarah, thank you for sharing with us today, and good luck to you. Congratulations again. Yep, yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.